राम सामर्थ्य योग पीठ ट्रस्ट ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम नमस्कार एंड ग्रीटिंग्स टू एवरीबडी ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ राम सामर्थ्य योग पीठ ट्रस्ट आई वॉमली वेलकम ईच वन ऑफ यू टूडे वी आर ऑल हियर to listen to samarth guru on the topic champion the potential which is a wellness uh, session i'll just give a brief introduction about guru ji a magnanimous personality whose name asim which means limitless or infinite speaks everything about him how can i briefly present a sketch of one who he is and what he does i will however try to give a very brief introduction of uh, samarth guru ji and the kind of work that he is doing samarth guru dr asim is a qualified medical professional and a well known yog guru a hindu spiritual teacher a proponent of vedant known for his humbleness and simplicity samarth guru upon post graduation practiced medicine and worked as a doctor in prestigious institutes with a reputation of providing free treatment to poor patients selflessness is one of his noticeable divine quality he is a devout ram bhakt and has an innate curious nature which led him to do extensive research on ancient indian science scriptures and samarth yoga is an outcome of 24 years of experimentation on higher subtle levels and services are and his services are rendered in many parts of the world He was ordained by Brahmalin His Holiness Swami Satyamitranand Giri Ji Maharaj at a very young age and he acquired his shastra gyan under prestigious tutelage of His Holiness Acharya Pradyuman Ji Maharaj and great Vedanti His Holiness Swami Shanti Dharmanand Saraswati Ji Samarth Guru is a man of high ideals living a virtuous life and has been inspired by the lives of Swami Vivekanand Ramkrishna Paramhans Swami Shivanand he sees himself as an instrument of God and his gurus His intense love for God and mankind is the source of his energy for he relentlessly carries out selfless service or nishkam seva this is evident by the fact that he has transformed lives of more than 1 million people he has conducted more than 5500 samarthi yoga sessions and has given training courses free of charge to approximately 620 centers he is currently based in london and travels across the globe for his courses and sessions his spiritual companion his whole her holiness ram mata shri also gave up her high profile job in london and uh, they are constructing a state of the art ashram in dev bhumi rishikesh the ashram will have separate gurukuls for boys and girls goshala temple meditation hall brain research center other uh, and there are many other projects also uh, samarth guru ji has helped thousands of people who suffered with the diseases physically emotionally financially supporting the ones who went into depression on losing their dear ones during pandemic living the vedantic principle of nishkamta or selflessness he is always ready to extend help to the needy in any corner of the world his sessions are elegant and inspirational he is iconic in modern times spinning his eclectic and immense knowledge amongst people of all ages He envisions a world free of mental and physical illnesses, poverty, hatred and violence. He wishes to see every single individual on this earth leading a healthy, happy, peaceful, prosperous, material and spiritual and a meaningful life. In today's wellness session, he will tell us on how to champion the inner potential. I welcome Samarth Guru ji. Thank you Sadhnavi. Before we start today's session, let's sit down with a straight back. Align your head in a straight line with your back i smile on your face and also body is attentive but relaxed we'll chant om for 3 times this you can do for 11 times in the morning 11 times in the afternoon and 11 times in the evening before you go to bed this om chanting has remarkable positive effects on your brain mind and body When you are chanting the Om, you should visualize the light within your navel and visualize that it's going upwards, piercing all your chakras, right from your basal chakra to Sahastra chakra, Muladhar, Swadhisthan, Manipur, Anahat, Vishuddha, Agya chakra, Sahastra chakra, and piercing it, piercing Sahastra chakra is go. It goes one and a half feet above your head and it opens up. in a form of beautiful lotus and it expands and expands and expands as you visualize the expansion of this flower you will see that you are released of all your stress all the tension all the sorrows all the inferiorities 
all the psychological problems. The more you practice within six months to a year's time, you'll see you are a completely changed personality. So let's do Om chanting for three times. Oh. Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachite, Purna, Sipurna Madaya, Purnameva Vashishite, Om Shanti, 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 Om Guru Purnamaha, Ramo Rajimani Sadavi Jayati, Ramam Ramesham Bhaji, Rame Rame Hatani Shajari Chemu, Rama Itas Mainamaha, Rama Nasti Parayanam Partaram, Rama Siddha Sosmiham, Rame Chittalaya Sada Bhavatume, O Rama Mamutara, O Rama Mamutara, O Rama Mamutara. I welcome you all to the today's session, which is on championing the potential. We have lots of hidden potential within ourselves. But are we aware of it? I shall start this session with a very small story, which is very close to my heart. It could have an awakening effect on you if you listen to it properly. This is a story of, of a sheep lion. There was a pregnant lioness. She, she became in a jungle and she became very weak because she couldn't hunt because of the big baby she had in our womb. And she could not feed for weeks and weeks and weeks and she was very weak. As once she was trying to cross the river, she couldn't hold herself back and she went with the flow. But while she got swept away, the baby was born and baby was on the shore safe. The baby got seen by a folk of sheep. There was a female sheep there she pitied upon him and the the folk of sheep took that lion with them, that cub with them. This baby lion started learning everything by looking around how sheep, sheep behaved. Grazing grass and bleating like the goats and, and the sheep. As the time passed by, the lion grew into a, a very young, strong lion. And it always remained within the, the flock of that sheep. One day, this flock got attacked by the lion. It was strolling around and it saw a, a big, big, big herd of sheep. When this lion was trying to attack this, he noticed that there was a lion with a big mane, big lots of hairs, a big heavily built lion running away, flying away, fleeting away from, from this attacking lion. He wondered, I understand that sheep are flying away from me, but why this lion are running away from me? He somehow got hold of it. And then this sheep lion pleaded, bleated and said, listen, Please leave me, don't don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me, please, please, please leave me, don't kill me. So he said, no, I am a lion and you are a lion as well. Why am I going to kill you? So this baby lion kept saying, no, 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 I am a sheep, I am a sheep, I am a sheep, please don't kill me. This lion, old lion, he tried to make him understand, but this sheep lion keep repeating himself that, oh, I am a sheep, I am a sheep. So he dragged him, he, he grabbed him from his main and he dragged him to the river and pushed his face onto the river shores and showed him 
Look at your face. Look at my face. Don't we look similar? He says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." But I am she. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. This lion kept repeating himself, and he slept in a couple of times and said that, "Please roar like how I roar." And he roared, and this baby lion tried the sheep lion, and he started roaring. And then he realized that he's a lion. He's not a sheep. What this story tells us. we limit our potential we limit our abilities by looking around people around us by our circumstances and that is the way we all are living can we change it yes and today's session is all about how we can change our belief system how we can live a very happy healthy prosperous meaningful life not just running after a mere job getting married having two kids building a house and dying a worthless life No. So today we will try and explore how we can unleash our inner potential, unleash our inner minds, how we can champion our potentials. Today's session is very much based on creating right practices. We will we will discuss about what is brain, how it works, what is neuroplasticity, how habits are formed, why we feel the way we feel, what are problem with our belief system and our thought process, how our belief system works. and if we know the hack how we can hack it then we will start practicing the way we can change it which are beneficial for us so we will conceive we will visualize we will plan and we will execute our belief system shouldn't get hacked by our surrounding and that is what today's session is all about how we can live a beautiful life a purposeful life so today we will start with understanding a little bit about the brain brain itself our brain is made up of more than 100 billion neurons and it is divided into different uh, if they, we have a picture uh, admin if you can show the brain picture then that's fine so we have this different parts of the brain so the frontal cortex is mainly that's what the the magenta color area that you can see This part of the brain is responsible for all the executive functions which is related to planning voluntary behavior execution intelligence cognition all these important functions that we have in our brain are mainly located in the frontal cortex and this frontal cortex differentiates us from lower animals now if we are just absorbing information uncontrolled information from our surrounding like people continuously playing on their mobile or w- watching television or just going and partying and spending time in unnecessary things not very well planned just thinking that they have to behave the way society behave to fit into the society then the problem occurs today we will learn that how much potential we've got in us uh, in our brain and how we can utilize that so this group of 100 billion neuron the neurons are the basic unit they are connected to each other but they don't talk to each other is there a way that we can understand that how brain works and then we can replicate that and important function that happens in your brain it, it the, the process that is called neuroplasticity as you can see on your screen the neuroplasticity is a is an is ability of your brain to form new neural connection that means different parts of your brain can connect to each other you can learn different skills it's an ability of brain to recognize itself how it recognizes recognizes itself both in structure and functions so if you can understand that how if by repeating right habits you can develop this neuroplasticity that means you can improve your decision making you can improve your planning you can improve your focus attention you can Im- improve your ability to memorize cognition understanding itself and surrounding by repeating that once you understand how the process work you can change your belief system you can change your way the your brain behaves and that removes this removes the limitations that you impose on yourself that i can do this and i cannot do this it gives you enormous potential hidden potential that you can explore and utilize it for your benefit this way the difference will come one who practices samarthyo he can increase his neuroplasticity he understands how his brain works how his higher functions of his brain are happening in his uh, brain and how he can hack it and also he can utilize these potential these powers for his benefit which ordinary people like the 
sheep lion was just observing sheep around itself and you know, was thinking that he is a sheep as well it takes a lion to make him realize that's what i want you to become i want you to become lions and realize your own potential and then go into the society and tell everyone that yes you roar like a lion not bleating like a like a goat or a sheep that's what you sh- we, we will be learning here today but it is very important for us to understand that neuroplasticity is the ability of brain to form new connections and if we can learn how to do that life is sorted this neuroplasticity can be created by either a traumatic event suppose if someone dies in the family or you get to know about a disease in your uh, body or you are going through difficult phase of your life of you going through stress your social interaction social media obviously comes into play with their positive impact positively by meditation by learning emotional intelligence learning new skills by attention we will cover that part that how you can improve your focus and your attention and how you can create a, a beautiful mind and a brain which is calm and composed and has got so much divine strength in itself that it can not only fulfill its own requirements and necessity but it can help millions and millions around itself and also diet exercise and new experiences also plays important role in that the downside of neuroplasticity is that if you are not aware of how this neuroplasticity work then you're caught into same habit like suppose if you can't get up early in the morning you're getting up late every early morning every day you're getting up late where you should be getting up at 3:30 4 o'clock in the morning you're getting up at 7 o'clock 8 o'clock that means you're losing 4 hours every day that means you're always behind in your routine when you're behind in your routine and you're catching up with things how can you lead a good life so neuroplasticity if you're not aware of it it can be detrimental for your abilities what it means it means that if you have a depressive tendency obsessive tendencies you have obsessive compulsive disorders or you have psychological disorders you get caught into it you don't find a way it's a, it's a it's a vicious circle the if you understand how to break this chain that we will learn today that's why it's a life changing session today if you stay with me learn the practice and focus on what i'm saying and try and do it with my, with me and practice it and then continue every day and you will see changes happening within few weeks within 6 months or a year your whole personality will change so that this is how it works now there is a part in your brain which is also called as amygdala which is responsible for fight and flight response how we we understood from this story here that this lion was thinking itself of a sheep and it was afraid of lion and it was trying to run away this happens through part in your brain which is called amygdala and which is responsible for fight and flight response so as you can see when you are anxious so what is happening in life let's understand understand that first why we are not able to utilize the potential what is happening you think that you are your abilities are limited your intelligence is limited your belief system is limited your strengths are limited your ability to focus and utilize your your hidden powers is limited that means the problems are bigger and you are thinking that you are very weak you are meager you can't fight with the big problems in the life when you continuously think that way your ne- your negative neuroplasticity kicks in and that continuously makes you feel that you people feel worthlessness people feel they rejected dejected then this anxiety then this discontentment comes in you that means that you're constantly discontented with yourself that means you start fighting with your surroundings that means you think that you are worthless and when you continuously think that way you get into depression what happens there when you are you are faced with a with a with a stressful situation if you have an ability if you have an understanding that how i can manage it it instantly creates new neural pathways in your brain to find solutions for that so you only need to know problem for once and solution you need to think on solution several times and thousands of times but not of the problem we do the other way around we think of the problem thousands and thousands of times and that's why we create a loop uh you know when your mind thinks your brain thinks that you are under danger we have created lots of artificial lines in our life when your brain thinks that you are under danger then what happens it creates a, a stress response in your body this is st- stress response uh it's called body's stress response which could take through take place through a slow pathway or a fast pathway what happens in this just for your understanding that as soon as you think that the situation is unmanageable or is undesired you have anxiety um 
you know you have apprehension and that then this this whole cycle kicks off say hypothalamus releases a hormone called crh hormone which activates pituitary then pituitary gland releases acts hormone which acts on your adrenal gland your adrenal gland then releases cortisol and then cortisol mobilizes body to deal with the stress now the increased level of this hormone in your body is the major cause of your stress because now your thought is affecting your mind and your brain and your brain is now affecting the secretion of hormones and now your hormones have controlled your behavior now you can't do anything you are stuck because as long as that hormone is there in your body it's going to affect the way your body responds how it works what it means then you will have lowered immune system you will have clogging of arteries you know you will have a defense system which will lower your immune system you will have metabolic disorders like your calcium not being deposited in your bones but it will start depositing in your brain as well so you know your weak bones become weak and that calcium get deposited in frontal lobe prefrontal cortex that means what that means the you are already not utilizing the the enormous power and ability that your brain has because you don't know how to use it then what you, whatever you have got you are even further hampering its activity such a poor and miserable state of being it affects so many parts of your body it af- completely affects you and if high level of cortisol stays for few months and years and years you start suffering with chronic fatigue that means you start feeling very low and you stop using your potential whatever you have and even your ability to deal with situation starts deteriorating similarly through far fast pathway through your uh, hypothalamus and sympathetic nervous system your spinal cord signals stimulates the adrenal gland again and adrenal medulla then releases adrenaline which increases heart rate perspiration and and other things so so what what is happening here in layman's term what is happening here in layman's term you are faced with a situation that situation you find yourself is unable to deal with and you're constantly stressed you're constantly stressed about money about this about mortgage about family about relationships about this about that about job and you you're finding yourself helpless and somehow here and there you look for distractions that means because if your mind is calm and composed you the problems clearly are visible to you and you find yourself not being able to deal with it and then you try to distract your mind which is not a good thing because more you distract your mind more you are weakening your mental abilities and more weak you become more problematic your life will become so how do we capitalize on this ability of brain to form neural plasticities and you know, use this neuroplasticity for improvement of your lives you know to live a healthy happy prosperous and meaningful life so let's start with how we start our day there are simple things that we will discuss today very important that there are two basic principles that samarthyo works on abhyas vairagya abhyam chitta vritti nirodha that means right practice repeated for long duration Long, over a long period of time brings about changes in your brain structure changes in your hormonal hormone secretion changes in your body chemistry and it ultimately makes it more and more beneficial for yourself and for you to be able to do lots and lots of activity that is beneficial for yourself and surrounding that means it enhances and it increases your potential now first thing that you should so how do we start you start with when you get up in the morning and there is these are small practices your whole life is made up of small small say suppose if you're looking at a picture when you look at the picture you see a picture and a shape but that picture itself is not actually it's not just a, a single picture it is made up of lots of thousands and thousands and millions and millions of pixels so if you expand it if you look deeper and deeper and deeper you will see that it is made up of small small dots that's why you you know when you collectively see that it looks like a image similarly your life is made up of small 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 moments when you are not focusing on the moment now when you are not correcting your habits now and you want a better result in the future i think you are deluded or you misguided and whoever tells you that by doing this or that it will be okay you without having a good life without having a pure life without having a right practice in your life you can be rich and successful and what not they're just wasting your time and in this it can't happen you have to adopt right practices in life so how do we start we start this way first thing is that when you get up in the morning sit down wherever you are sit down fold your legs if you can or hang your legs from the from the from the bed itself but sit with a back, straight back and with a straight neck keep a smile on your face even if you don't feel like smiling because obviously 
life is very stressful and as soon as you open up your eyes you might the idea might, might come oh i've got to make this payment oh i have to go to job this is not going right in my life you know this relationship is not going well what will happen to my job this that what not there is so many thoughts that will come only with practice gradually 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 you'll see that you are able to stop those thoughts in your brain the thoughts will only work when when you want to and the way you want to so first thing you do you get up in the morning you have a smile on your face it changes the hormonal composition in your body when you're smiling initially it might be forced or it might look artificial but gradually when you do it for few weeks it will become an automated process that's why the neuroplasticity comes so when you sit when you get up in the morning you sit down and you smile if any negative thought tries to come into your mind you just try and push it away and just focus on your smiling face you sit there for a few seconds then what you do the new tech next technique is the is is the samarth yoga visualization techniques which is very 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 helpful to you very helpful to you how you can enhance your visualization how you can enhance your brain power we will cover that in coming sessions but this sessions will try and cover that how you can unleash your inner might how you can utilize your brain's potential to live a beautiful life so second step is the visualization technique what do you do in visualization technique it is pretty simple if you have you believe in your in a in a deity or in a in a higher power you know on the guru or a beautiful places or sceneries when you get up first thing in the morning you do not look your facebook or all these multimedia or this or that or start talking to someone or call someone this is a bad way of starting your day because as i said that there are four step to how you lead a beautiful life one is you have to conceive then you have to visualize then you have to plan and then you have to execute so first thing is conceiving if you're not good at conception if you're not good at conceiving because if your mind is distracted you can't focus your mind for a couple of seconds then that conception that conceiving of that idea that thought will not happen and it will happen but in a negative way whatever you're used to of doing that those negative thoughts will come again and it will tell you oh another day another day to for the job oh i don't want to get up but i have to get up oh i don't want to talk to these people but i have to oh i have monetary problems oh i have relationship problem oh i will again have to face this oh i will again have to face face that why do i feel so low oh my body is aching oh this is happening that is happening all this will come automatically to you if you are not strong enough if you don't have a strong will power these thoughts will come so visualization will help how do you do that you sit down you smile second thing is visualization you on your mobile don't check anything else but have a pictures and where you have picture of your deity of your guru of beautiful places of beautiful pilgrims and you look at very important thing those who want to get rid of depression psychological problems or those who are suffering with chronic stress it's a beautiful technique that you can do you have to idealize someone which is whom you see that they are the embodiment they are the image of beauty health peacefulness so for those who identify themselves as a female body or those who identify themselves as a male body they can choose a deity which exactly looks like the most beautiful deity that you want to look like it could be any goddess kali saraswati durga any and believe trust my words we have cured thousands and thousands of cases of depression through this one practice if you are say in a male body and you identify yourself as male then you know look at look at lord rama krishna shiva or any any of your gurus not a not a problem you visualize that look at the picture for 10 seconds and then close your eyes when you close your eyes you try and visualize try and see that in your frontal lobe now this is very important now we understood how what is brain it is made up of 100 billion neurons it works through a process called neuroplasticity that that means when neurons talk to each other they form a pathway the more you use a certain pathway more permanent it becomes so your reactivity becomes like suppose if you're trying to learn the piano or you're trying to learn the how to drive initially you are scared of driving or traffic gears and this clutch and all this thing it becomes very stressful for you but when you continuously do that for few years it becomes a second habit you're talking to someone sitting next to you you're driving smoothly you know where you're going you're very calm and composed and at the same time your brain knows how to operate the car or how to play the piano similarly when you start doing this you visualize you look at an image and you close your eyes and then visualize that image in your brain in the center of your brain it's called bhrumati you know 
just middle where your eyebrows meet. That's where your prefrontal cortex is. The beauty of this research that we have done for all, almost over 20 years, that wherever in whichever part of your brain you visualize the light, that part of your brain starts functioning in a much better way. And it increases the ability of that part of brain multifold. That means when you visualize that light in your brain and you do it for six months, one year, two years, that means you, you are enhancing the neuroplasticity of that brain. You are enhancing the neurogenesis. You are enhancing the ability to think better, to focus better. You, it increases your intelligence, cognition, understanding, comprehension, and ability to under, understand yourself and surrounding. That means it gives you a beautiful way to live a healthy life and a beautiful life and a happy, peaceful life. Because now your abilities are increasing. If you remember what I said in the beginning of the session, that if you think that your ability to deal with a problem is much weaker than the problem itself, then you are faced with stress because you have a big problem and that you cannot solve. But as soon as you have that belief system within yourself that no matter how big the problem is, I am able to solve. So you see yourself bigger than the problem. That is where the neuroplasticity will come. That's where the neuro visualization will come. That's where your belief system will come. So you look at the picture, you look at picture, I'm looking at the picture, you can try and do it yourself now. And then close your eyes and you visualize that image in your brain in a form of light in the frontal lobe, here. You can do it now. And you can see the change itself happening now. Because your brain is changing every single moment. Like I'm talking to you, and if you're completely attentive to me, your brain, its structure and behavior will change straight away, now. But when you continuously do it time and again, time and again, time and again, it brings about a permanent change. If you don't, don't do it repetitively, then it doesn't bring about a permanent change. So we're trying to achieve a permanent change. So you look at look at the image, you close your eyes and you visualize that. And see, you have to keep an eye that how you're progressing. So initially when, we, when you start doing that, you will be able to see the image with your eyes closed, but then it will fade away very quickly. When you continuously do it for a few months, six months, year, two years, three years, then what will happen? You look at the image and then you close your eyes and you can visualize that in your brain, within your body, and you will feel exactly like how that image is. So suppose if I look at Lord Rama and I close my eyes, I feel that power, that strength, those values, I feel myself embodiment of that. I get that courage, that strength within myself. And then my belief system changes, then my neuroplasticity changes, then my understanding of self changes, then my understanding of surrounding changes. And that's where the magic happens. That's where you can champion your potentials. Because as soon as you look at the image, and that image is embodiments of hundreds of good qualities, even by looking at it, you are not repeating it. Just with, through the image, you are absorbing those, you are imbibing those values within yourself. Such a beautiful way of doing it. That is very, very important. So I have a, we call it as a daily darshan or a daily visualization. You know, so make a folder, put good pictures in there, visualize that and, and close your eyes and visualize that. That is one part. To enhance that, when I, when I mention about how you can enhance your visualization, always look at a light source. So I would suggest that if you have young children in, in, in the family or you have people who are struggling with their uh, understanding, you know, uh, they're struggling with psychological problems, attention problems. Very simple thing to do. Light a diya or a candle, look at the flame. It's called flame gazing or in Sanskrit, in yoga, it's called trataka. Very good thing to do. Those who are who want to progress on spiritual path as well, they can also follow this. You light a candle and look at the flame, gazing flame, trying not to blink your eyes. Very simple. You look at it, and try not to blink your eyes. If you can continuously keep it open, you will see that your ability to keep your eyes open for longer duration. This is life-changing exercise. Very simple. Try and do it for 10 minutes. Initially, you will not be able to keep your eyes open, but you will have urge to wink it, to blink it. Then gradually, you know, you will get urge from in, inside to close it, but you use your willpower and not close it. Then you will feel that your eyes are tearing. Your eyes will start tearing. And as soon as the tears starts coming off your eyes, you will see that the urge to close your eyes is gone. As soon as the urge to close your eyes is gone, you are continue to, you will be able to continue continuously focus on that light. And once you've done that for 10 minutes, 
close your eyes and visualize that light, that flame in your frontal lobe, just in between your eyebrows. This light is of peace, of knowledge, of intelligence, of growth, of prosperity. Whatever you want to achieve in your life, you want to become a scientist, you will become a scientist. You want to become very popular man, you will become popular. If you want to become a big businessman, you will become a business. Because what is happening now, you need to clearly understand that. Your mind was scattered. Now you have learned the ability to focus your mind on the thought that you want it to make it happen. And that's where the conceiving. So you are, this is the conception. If your conception is not right, if a baby is not conceived properly, you cannot give birth to a baby. It is as simple as that. Similarly, if thought is not conceived properly in your brain, then you cannot visualize it properly. And if you cannot visualize, your brain will not understand because your brain understands only in a pictorial form. Even when I'm talking to you, it's making picture all the time and trying to make sense of it. So when you conceive, when you visualize, then only you can plan and execute it. So it is very, very important that you, are, you have ability to conceive an idea and to visualize and hold on to it. Then rest of the thing, planning will fall accordingly. And once you learn that, the execution will also come. So this is the visualization technique. You can enhance your visualization technique through the strata that I have mentioned to you. It is pretty simple. Do it for 10 minutes. Do it morning and evening. Continuously, you can do it in your office as well. Have a, have a picture of a flame on your, on your laptop or on your mobile. Put it in front of you. Gaze it on it without blinking your eyes and close your eyes, you know, after 10 minutes. And just rub your hands like this and then put it on your eyes. This enhances your brain power, multifold, thousands of fold. And once you do it, you will know because you are, you are learning the ability to focus. How it helps you again? Lots of the people, worldly people, they, fo they try to focus on 10 different things. So their mental ability is scattered. They can't do anything properly. In this, you will learn how to get into one thing, do it properly, come out. The result is 10,000 times much better than an ordinary person. Then you focus on another, you come out. Then you focus and then you come out. Vivekananda used to say that if I had an ability, if I had an ability to go back in my past and change my education, I would have rather learned how to focus and detach my mind rather than learning all these books, going through all this book and doing all these degrees. Because that is the crux of living a beautiful life. Once you've done the visualization technique, this is very good for preventing depression as well. For those who are suffering with psychological disorder, pick up a beautiful, like if you are, a, a, if you are in a female body, pick up a beautiful deity. Keep it in your mobile all the time. Every 5-10 minutes, half an hour, look at it, close your eyes and visualize yourself as that. Durga, Kali, Saraswati, whatever. Similarly, if you are in a male body, you could have male deities and practice that without doing much effort, Lord within yourself. A divinity will come, strength will come, positivity will come. Good news will start coming. People will start helping you more. Your destiny will change. All your bad luck, your misfortune will go. Now, third process is Shakti Jagran. Very simple process. You sit stress, you are still sitting, you are smiling, you have done the visualization. Now you breathe through left nostril. You visualize the light. Visualize the light as if it is going through your left nostril, going through your back of your spine. It is going down in your... Mooladhara chakra in the basal chakra, it making a big burst of light. It is moving up again and again through your spine. It is making a big burst in your brain. And then it is removing all the darkness, all the weaknesses, all the negativity, all the ill health. It's going out of your brain. So how do you do it? I'll show you first and then you can start doing it. So left, you breathe in, you hold as long as you can. You visualize the light again, as I said, any part of your brain or body, when you visualize the light and then you can see that part illuminated, the functionalities of that part improves, improves thousandfold. No doubt about it. When you do it for months and months and weeks and weeks and year and year, your whole personality will change. Your whole existence will change. You will become such a blissful, peaceful, calm personality. So strong within. All your hidden potential, divine potential will unfold exponentially. Try and do that. So breathing from left nostril. Breathe from left. Hold. Visualize what I have uh, uh, explained to you. And see that all muddy, dark colored misfortune is going out. And you're full of divine blissfulness now. Breathe again. But now this time from right nostril. Visualize, visualize the light the same way going through your nape of neck. 
going down into the basal chakra then coming up and then coming back up again making a big explosion of light there and making an explosion of light in your brain and then when you feel like exhaling you close your right nostril and you exhale from left nostril and let all the and see that all misfortune is going miles and miles and miles millions of miles away from you no misfortune no darkness no negative thought life is beautiful i am beautiful i am full of divinity i am full of power i am full of vigor it will change your life so left hold right right hold left this is one left breathe in from left hold and exhale from right breathe in from right hold and exhale from left this is one you do it three times that's it shouldn't take long next one you create a resolution for resolution that we will talk about as i said that your brain has ability to function in various ways which we'll not be able to cover everything today we're just getting started today but it is the crux of a beautiful life how do you do that now you sit down again you open up your hands most of people who go into depression who have psychological problem or have stress they think that there is something that they have not achieved someone has done wrong to them people are doing wrong to them there is something lacking within them these four resolution will change the way you behave, you feel and mark my words when you get into that zone like when i'm just talking how i started and how i'm how i'm feeling now i'm thousand times much more feeling much more enlightened within myself much more happier blissful i'm not aware who's listening who's not listening what it will happen no i am 100 200% involved in what i'm doing and once you get the into that zone it is now modern science more the positive psychology is learning they call it as flow when you are so much involved in that that it becomes an automated process that's how just believe if your life become an automated process you know it is it is an automated mode which is a divine mode everything will keep happening for you you don't have to worry about much of the things and it will automatically happen and just see all this stress will pass away now the problem with mind is that we always feel that something is wrong with me someone is not good to me this is not there this is not there we always complaining because we feel that lack of resources lack of power lack of will we feel that we are lacking something with it that will go with this resolution you will feel so blissful that you will bless everyone whoever even doing wrong to you you will not worry about that so you keep your hands like this you say four resolutions very simple resolutions that i am grateful to everyone this is first have gratitude everyone around you has played a role since you were born till where you are everyone has played some part otherwise you would have not been where you are so you bless everyone you show gratitude that i show gratitude to every single person i show gratitude to every single molecule atom in this world that what i am because of their blessings help and support so i i have a gratitude for what i have you start feeling that abundance now instead of feeling that you're lacking you're feeling that abundance then you pardon everyone unknowingly we do wrong things to people or knowingly we pardon everyone every morning and we ask for pardon so you pardon if someone has done wrong to you you ask for pardon and if you have done wrong to someone you pardon them fourth but very important that i am afraid of no one and no one is afraid of me this is called abhedan when in in sanatan dharma in hindu dharma when you take sanyasa the oath you take is that this whole universe is you it should be it shouldn't be afraid of you and you are afraid of nothing because you are one with this existence if you can do that it affects your amygdala so you say i'm afraid of no one and no one is afraid of me i'm afraid of no situation no matter what may happen i am not afraid of anyone and no one is afraid of me just repeat that even if you don't understand the science the psychology the meanings the divinity behind it don't uh, just practice it we are talking about how we can improve how we can unleash the inner might how we can champion the potential so for resolution then you come to the fifth part is that creating an armor around you very simple as i said that your brain understand in a picture form we saw in this story that lion looks like a lion he's got a body of a lion he's got every single thing which resem- which makes him a lion but his belief system makes him feel as if it's a sheep and it it bleeds instead of roaring that is how our understand our belief system that's how our, uh, strong our belief system is when you constantly in the morning you create an armor around yourself that no negativity no misfortune no negativity no wrong intentions 
no ill health no misfortune can come to me this i have got this armor around me do it three times and all the positivity happiness health blissfulness that i have the light the knowledge i have i'm spreading it to millions and millions around me when you repetitively do that my brain has a pictorial memory as soon as you do that it understand that i don't have to take negativity from anyone else so when you do it come repetitively for a few months it automatically if someone is negative to you is harsh to you is trying to you don't you know, my brain isn't even doesn't register and the the complex process and the hormonal process that would have started by triggering of cortisol when cortisol is high your body gets triggered on a on a, a, a alert mode when you are in alert mode then what happens all your body major vital body functions stop and you you start preparing to fight or fly and this when your immune system goes down your arteries get clogged your your digestion is poor your eyesight is poor you have hypertension diabetes you breathe heavily your your lungs are not function properly the calcium cycle becomes improper instead of depositing calcium into the bones it starts depositing depositing calcium in your brain and already you you're not using your brain properly and on top of it you are even further deteriorating the functions how bad it is simple technique will help you to overcome all this so make an armor around yourself when you get started whole day what you should do is that you should live in a in a presence of a divinity within yourself so consider yourself detached in a way so first thing we did is abhyas where i gave them chitravritti nirodha two founding foundation founding principle of samarthya abhyas means repeating repeating right habits that we have done in the beginning throughout the day as and when you working you work for half an hour look at the deity close your eyes look at the guru close your eyes visualize them in yourself and then again continue with your work when you're sending emails when you're talking to people before you start anything remember the divine within you and then talk simple things it doesn't take long when you're eating food remember the divine in the need the same food become medicine for you similarly when you're doing whole work if something good happens it is by the grace of god is by the grace of divine and if something goes wrong that is fine you are detached to it so the second part of this is first is practice second is vairagya that means non attachment you see yourself as different from the body this is a great 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 research that the ancient sages have done in himalayas and i had i was fortunate to learn that and that's why i'm spreading this happiness around the world that once you understand you are in a you know it is you become more and more self aware that who you really are away from this mind body complex the more you understand it increases the profoundness of how you live your life how beautiful it is so what you do is that whole day you work as an instrument of god and guru that's it you are away you are not attached to things whatever may happen may happen not a, not a problem and improve on your diet that is very very important eat less complicated food that means eating a vegetarian diet is is much healthier for you if you switch on a on a vegetarian diet for 6 months one year couple of years you'll see your whole body composition changes how you feel inside because by purifying your food you purify your mind a pure mind is able to focus when mind is able to focus then only you are able to conceive when you are able to conceive and visualize that's when you are able to plan and execute and when you can conceive visualize plan and execute anything that you that you plan in your life that you will lead it to completion and that's why you will be much more productive much more healthier much more prosperous your life will be much more meaningful for yourself and surrounding if you're struggling within yourself if you're not able to do enough for yourself how are you going to help others the samarth yoga teaches you that live a beautiful life a selfless life a life which is full of divinity to help and support others you can only give what you have if you have divinity within yourself you will give that if you have blissfulness you will give that you know if you squeeze a lemon only lime juice will come out not mango juice similarly if you have stress if you have inferiorities if you have psychological problems within yourself you are only going to give problems to your relationship that's why relationships are in trouble today because everyone wants what they can get once you start living this life you think that what i can give and that changes the whole perspective of life and your life become more profound and it is all about life experience how you felt moment by moment by moment as i said that a picture is made up of pixels they are individual dots of a different color and that forms a whole picture similarly a moment by moment you live a beautiful life when you look back you will have a beautiful portrait of your life which is very great which is not haphazard because if you mix up the pixel the whole picture will be distorted similarly if you mess up with your moment to moment 
your life is not a beautiful picture it is a haphazardly arranged pixel which does not make any sense so that's why eat pure food that will help you now coming to exercises do some exercises choose five yoga asanas which you can do surya namaskar is a beautiful asana do it every day i have practiced it every day up to 200 250 as well and it has done lots of research we've done lots of lots of research it is a beautiful exercise that you can do it encompasses everything you could do shirshasana gradually you can learn that path paschimottanasana halasana matsyasana so choose a set of exercise do it daily it only takes 15 20 minutes it's best to do it in the morning because your cortisol levels are high when you get up early that's why you should get up early as well when your cortisol levels are very high you start doing yoga you start doing relaxation exercise it brings the cortisol down that means that avoids extra pressure workload on your heart on your body and it puts it in a calmer mode then you are able to think clearly your mind is not cluttered you can make right decisions in your life before going to bed lots of people have problem in sleeping because they try to sleep they're tossing in the bed when it's time to get up they still haven't got a good sleep so when you sleep lie down properly with your hands lie on your back and lie down and gradually think of light starting from your toe see that you are full of light and bring it up to your head that's how you should lie down and visualize visualize every single part of your body starting from the toe what it does is that it takes away all the clutter all the clutter away from your mind and it allows you to bring it inside inwards on to your body and inside and going deeper and deeper when your mind is become calm and composed as soon as your mind goes to sleep you go to sleep if your mind is still troubling you so stop watching lots of lots of television and there's lots of people fall asleep by while watching a tele- television or playing with a mobile and they just go to sleep no avoid any form of media or mobile or anything at least an hour and a half or two before you go to bed because good sleep is very important if you're not sleeping properly then your whole life is messed up your body is not functioning properly you're not it's not rejuvenating it's not cleansing the anything that's where all these disorders cancers growth tumors stress depression cardiac problem heart problem all this problem lung problem all this problem arises because you're not giving proper rest to your body because your mind is working when it should be going to sleep and it wants to your body wants to sleep when your mind is telling that oh it's it's 6 o'clock 7 o'clock you need to rush to work and your body hasn't got rest because your mind did not put your your body at sleep because it was constantly working so going to bed you just lie down on your back visualize your body breathe deep and visualize that you are your all your attention is folding 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 back all your attention is folding into your heart and gradually visualize the breath and see that it is made up of light and focus on your breath and gradually you'll fall asleep again get up early in the morning very very important so if you follow these practices what i have explained to you your life will change there are certain pranayama exercises that i will discuss with you that will also help you to unleash the potential to tap on your divine potential so we have learned great deal of things that how we should conduct ourselves because it's the day to there is no magic wand that one day you do and everything will happen no whoever tells you is just fooling you and everyone you see they just doing back up back up go there go go where do what you know and they just regurgitating they just vomiting what they read from here and there without experience this knowledge cannot transform people so it is very very important that you keep a good lifestyle just listening to motivational speaker or this or that will not help it will only help them not you so read good books read divine books have good association think of your deity think of your guru think of beautiful thing think of have add a purpose to your life which i'll come to this later so pranayama exercises you can do anulom vilom again to start with we'll cover more practices as we go along so what you do is that you breathe from left nostril you don't hold you exhale from right you exhale inhale from right and exhale from left i'll show you exhale as much as you can inhale as much as you can you you can do it for 100 times so inhaling and exhaling inhaling from left exhaling from right ex- ex- inhaling from right exhaling from left forms one count do it for 100 times 200 times 300 times if you can do it for 500 times it's beautiful then another exercise to cleanse your subtle channels to make you energize to keep your lungs 
full of oxygen, more oxygen you have, better your brain works. Because 20% of the oxygen that you inhale is, is utilized by your brain. So if you don't have proper lungs, you are not utilizing your potentials, your brain potential. And that's where you are always lethargic. You are dragging yourself. So how do you do? This is called Bastrika or the breathing exercise, the, the lung breathing exercise, the forceful, forceful breathing exercise. I will show you how you do it. Inhaling and exhaling makes one count. Start with set of 10, 10, 10, 10 sets of 10, 10, 10, increase it to 20, 30, 40, 100, 500, and see the benefits. You, you, will, you might have dizziness, you might feel dizziness, you might feel lightness sometimes because your body is weak and there's the oxygen concentration is changing. But if you continue to do it for a few weeks and months, you will see your whole, you feel so light, you feel light. And then there's so much benefit that you can reap, which I've already covered, that your hormone uh, chemistry within, hormonal chemistry within your body changes. Your oxygen is, your blood is more oxygenated. That means every single part of your body has more oxygen. That means you will not have any tumors. You will not have cancers. You will not have problem in your brain. You will not have problem in your heart. You will not have problem in your lungs. Your lungs have so much, such a large surface area. You, you can spread it on a on mm -hmm. over a tennis court. It is that big. But what happens because we do shallow breathing, that's why we don't utilize the full potential of your lungs. When you start doing that, you will reap the benefit. I think we'll limit this to the two pranayams for today. Now, I'm just conscious of time. We are just coming to the end of it. So, what I have covered so far, we have understood what is brain, how it works, what is neuroplasticity, how it forms the habits, why neuroplasticity, if we understand why it is important, how Samarthi Yoga works, how you should get up in the morning, what practices that you do that will help you to unleash your inner might or tap on the hidden divine potential in yourself. Because if your ability to deal with the problem, I always say that it is not the circumstances, it is the ability to react to the circumstances that needs to change. When your ability to deal with problem changes, your stress levels are already low. When you have higher strengths within yourself, you have lots of power, vigor, energy, enthusiasm, intelligence, attention, cognition, higher brain functions, planning, decision-making, execution. If this all falls in place, why would you struggle? And if you don't struggle, life is beautiful. So and that is how it helps you to conceive right idea. Now I'll come to the bigger purpose of the life. Your life purpose is not to run a business, not to just get married, not just to have kids, not just to have, own a house and die like a mosquito. I'm sorry to say, this is a very weak life. You should add purpose to it. Now, modern psychology also says that enjoyment is, pleasure is not just happiness, is not just engagement and pleasure. It is much more than that. So what, what I mean is that when you add a bigger purpose to your life, even today in front of me, you know, those who consider me as a guru or those who don't consider me just as a as a mentor, take a big resolution today that I want to live a beautiful life where I would have helped millions and millions of people in a positive way. I should have transformed their life when I look back in my life without any selfish purpose. Add a purpose to your life. That creates such a huge difference in how you feel about yourself. It keeps you away from depression. It keeps you healthy. Because the entire existence, your body, your brain, your mind, your body chemistry, your hormones, everything start working that way. And where you have small ambitions in life, it just makes you cripple in your life. It just makes you a miserable creature who's just trying to get things from others. You don't want to live that life. I'm sorry to say, most of around us are living a life of a sheep. We are observing sheep. And that's why this lion, the lion in you, thinks that they are the sheep, sheep lion. I am here to tell you that you are the lion, you roar, you don't bleed. And that's how Swami Vivekananda says that if you could have handful lion, dozens of lion in every single country, there will be enough to change the world. My faith is in you. You should change your habits. There is no shortcut to it. No matter how much money you spend on things, no matter how branded clothes you wear, no matter how big cars you have, no, mat no matter how big house you have, no matter how much it does not make any difference to how you feel. I meet millionaires and billionaires and they still are miserable in their lives. They suffer with lots of problems. If you live a selfless life, a life that's full of big purpose, a divine purpose, then 
you will live a very content happy healthy prosperous and meaningful life i will end here i wish you all the best if anyone has any questions i can take questions in next like 5 10 minutes otherwise i will close this call and i wish you all the best i would only say practice practice and practice abhyas vairagya kam chitta vitti thank you